Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Artificial DM. Cringe can come in many different forms, and generally, when we look at cringe, we end up looking at people who inflict damage on their playgroup and other people. The damage inflictors being that guy's neckbeard, edgelord, weeb, or furry. There is one character archetype that is often overlooked when it comes to problems in RPGs, and that problem is the pacifist character. I believe the problem with pacifist characters is they often are neutral. They don't actually take a stand on what side of the road they stand on, and then end up hindering their party more than actually helping it, especially in situations where fighting is involved. So today, we're going to be looking at RPG horror stories and asking the question, what are your most cringe-inducing experiences with pacifist characters? I once had a player that tried to persuade a feral werewolf that violence was not the answer. Needless to say, it did not succeed. Older guy, probably in his late 50s, early 60s, asked to join our public table. Had a bard prepped and ready to go, with a minor level adjustment, so the DM had him pull up a seat. Seemed like a nice enough guy, a little more chatty than we were used to, but whatever. Introduction roleplaying went smoothly enough, with his character bragging about how amazing he was. So we set off on the night's monster hunt. Once we ran into that first encounter, the new guy got visibly excited. Rolled poorly on initiative, so we had to listen to him chatter on about how surprised we were all going to be for 20-ish minutes before his turn finally arrived. I shriek in terror and look for something to hide under in the cart. If that had been the end of it, I probably wouldn't even remember that night. But he spent 20 plus minutes moving his mini one square at a time and then describing his character's panic in greater and greater detail between moves. The whole thing was extremely awkward because he was just so into it. At some point, the owner even had to come ask him to keep the noise down. Honestly, that's something you would expect an NPC or a level zero character to be doing. Kind of funny though. I was the cringe. Lost Minds of Feldelver spoiler. Session 4 or 6 if I remember. We skipped the goblins entirely, but the party is now returning just to explore. I am coming into the game with a new character, Tiefling Warlock, character before was Barbarian Elf, after missing the last two sessions. So I don't know what's going on, and the DM introduces me just strolling in the goblin cave while the party is on the bridge heading towards the room with the captured guy and the goblin. The encounter, instead of being a negotiation, is an immediate combat encounter. Instead of the regular encounter with the five or so goblins like in the book, the DM changed it to only one goblin and his three pet Gricks in a pit, because DM needs to increase combat rating for a higher level group. The DM didn't say the name of the monsters, and I got distracted for a moment to only be able to hear Big Worm as the description for the monsters. DM then starts to describe the unconscious guy being thrown into the pit and surrounded by the big worms. I say I jump in and put my hands on the worms, to push them gently while rolling animal handling because I didn't want to harm just the poor worms, according to me. The DM and the table look at me weird at that point and ask me if my character is dumb. The DM then rolls for them to bite. I am confused. How can this worm bite and attack me? We begin a dumb discussion until the DM has enough and just shows me a photo of what a Grick is and how big they are. Immediate panic for my life and start yelling at this party of total strangers to get me out of the pit. Cue everyone laughing and me being embarrassed about the whole thing. Thankfully, I didn't die and I was just a horror player and a liability for the party for that encounter only. Curse of Strahd DM had Strahd stand ominously on top of a tower during an encounter with some fodder creatures. Our paladin, which could fly, tries to go straight to him, ignoring combat, during three rounds, to try persuading him to leave the people alone and surrender. Do I even need to say the outcome of that? There was this one story that finally triggered a very long talk. So we were 15, 16 years old? A trio of totally socially inept nerds. Nerd social fallacies up and down the scale. And one guy in our group desperately had to prove how creative he was. 
The main manifestation is that I don't think he ever played a character for more than two sessions. He started as a sorcerer, decided that was too similar to the group's wizard, made a rogue instead, decided that was boring because no magic, made a bard, and so on and so on, and his backstories got increasingly stupider. It ended when, after we had been playing for a few months, he made his masterwork, a chef. I honestly don't remember what class the guy was, and it doesn't remotely matter. What matters is this. The character was given a few character traits. Claustrophobia will not go into any closed rooms, especially not caves or dungeons. Fear of the dark will not go out at night or into any dark rooms. Fear of monsters will not get into a fight with monsters, will just run away. Pacifist will not fight intelligent opponents. Chef, only motivation he has is becoming a better chef, doesn't care about money or fame. Now, as 15 year olds who had learned about D&D from our own translation of English source books and playing Baldur's Gate, all our adventures so far had been either thinly veiled excuse plots to go into dungeons and fight zombies and kobolds, or wacky exploration of incoherent fantasy stuff. So, we had a calm discussion about game expectations and character motivation, and decided to restructure the campaign so everyone was happy. <laughs> we were 16 year old giant dorks. There was an attempt to continue playing the current dungeon, a lot of passive aggression, possibly some shouting, a declaration that the current DM didn't want to do it anymore, a DM rotation, the second DM declaring that this was impossible a character death, more shouting, and then some very angry games of Magic the Gathering instead, because D&D was now ruined forever, but none of us had any other friends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> having been a 15 or 16 year old guy, I can totally see where the friend was being a massive dickhead. It would be interesting to structure a character that had those phobias, but he's working on overcoming his fears to become better. One was Pacific Stupid. Wouldn't do shit in battle except heal the enemy because he wouldn't let us hurt others. Look, if someone hurt an NPC, alright, I get why you heal it. But an elder black dragon? He also was such a spiritual character. Chill dudes, we don't need to fight. Go with the flow. Glad that is over. I'll give you a one sentence horror story instead. I try to suck the blink dogs off in order to pacify them. During combat, we did not play ERP. She was kicked out on the spot. Oh, I need to change the voice. I try to suck the blink dogs off in order to pacify them. Furries. Or, you know. White girls from dogs. Not a pacifist character, but the player had written an edgelordy monster hunter tiefling fighter didn't play the character anything like that. The worst point was when I threw a pack of hellhounds at the party and he spent the entire fight and the short rest after rolling animal handling. And because I was a new DM, I didn't stop him from rolling the second time, which would have done a lot because the party ended up pissed at him too for doing nothing in combat but trying to befriend a hellhound belching fire at them. Not cringe, but confusion and annoyance. As a new DM, I started my second table while in the midst of the pandemic, May 2020. Got a lot more free time, and my first table was doing well. One player is doing a rogue that is also a healer. First combat, first session. Okay rogue, it's your turn. What do you do? I move here, and I hold my turn. You mean you hold your action? No, I don't do anything. Okay. Did this a few times. Since combat was, of course, counting everyone pitching in, the others had it more rough. It would not fly with me today. I'm all for pacifist players, but Mr. Pacifist will have a chat with me before the first combat about how to make it work. Springing it onto your DM is not the way to do it. Well, one of my friends suggested to the DM that her character should have disadvantage when attacking the pack of wolves that we were fighting because she really likes wolves. The battle ended in a TPK. Adventurers League game, and one of my earlier encounters with Adventurers League. 
We had a table of three, including a pacifist cleric, and were all low level. I think the cleric was level one. I was probably just level two myself. In the very first combat encounter, the cleric used all his spell slots on buff spells. Now, buffing the party is all well and good, but to reiterate, he used all his spell slots in the first encounter of a dungeon crawl. For the rest of the session, he just stood in a corner during combat, while I and the other character handled all the combat. And of course, the DM still kept the encounter, as designed, for three characters, even though only two were actually contributing anything at all. Actually, I don't think he even adjusted the encounters for the party's strength. So we were getting slaughtered, while the cleric just stood on the side going, I'm a pacifist. I won't fight no matter what. He didn't have any useful spells left to cast, and wouldn't even use the help action to give any of us an edge in combat. It's surprising we even managed to survive that session. I don't mind pacifist characters as a concept, and I've seen pacifists work well when they consistently contribute to the party both in and out of combat, but that one was just dead weight. Dude tried to make a gargoyle his ally. Didn't work the first time. Then just stood with arms open and let the gargoyle hurt him to show his intentions. However, I was a first time DM and allowed the gargoyle to peacefully respect him. Wouldn't fly nowadays. Someone played a naive tribal girl cleric who didn't understand how the world works. Here's a few of her greatest hits. Party broke into a prison to free some captured pirates. She tried to ask the prison guards to surrender, and they just looked at each other and went, Uh, no? Party crashed an execution and freed the prisoners, and she tried to ask the nine-foot-tall, clad in spiked armor, spear-wielding executioner to surrender. The rest of the party was like, where the actual fuck do you think we are? Party accidentally activated a summoning rune and summoned a dragon zombie. Sorcerer died, and the party had difficulty killing the zombie dragon, because she took very little attacking spells, not even Sacred Flame, one of the most ubiquitous cleric cantrips. She also forgot that she had Guiding Bolt. Not quite a pacifist character, but I had a player try to intimidate a group of drow archers who had been firing in tandem with readied actions all at the same target. The drow archers that were also up on a wooden platform in a large cavern in good cover. This platform later was blown to matchsticks by the sorceress's fireball. How did he try this? By telling the party to wait, stepping out into the open, and threatening them. When he got down with a volley of arrows after his middling roll, he threw a hissy fit at me that a bunch of low challenge rating archers would have been intimidated by a 5th level's roll that fell somewhere in the 14 to 17 range. The drow archers, far out of reach of his attacks, with cover and the high ground. Next session, another player, the semi-bruiser of a paladin, got webbed by a giant spider and rolled poorly to get out. The fighter refused to use one of his attacks to cut the web, because the paladin player hadn't supported him against my decision about the DC of the intimidate check. Every other player at the table was like, man, this is a cooperative game. If you don't free him, the spiders are just going to hit you next. He didn't do it. The fighter player then went down from one of the spiders and quit the campaign and shortly thereafter blocked basically everybody in the group. Well, my daughter played as a non-lethal monk, definitely not a pacifist, but had taken a vow not to kill any humanoid. Worked out fine, till she broke her vow by killing herself and a demon by causing a cave-in. Now she's a dragonborn barbarian and kills all the humanoids. I've got one of my party members wondering if she can find a way to defeat the BBEG without actually fighting against him thinking she can possibly find some form of redemption for him. The BBEG is an homicidal maniac who's turned an entire village into undead thralls of himself and has tried to directly kill us on three different occasions by this point. Don't get me wrong, I love the player. She's an absolute angel and I love playing with both her and her character in the game since her mentality of always talk first can bring up some really interesting moments. But this one's just a little bit much. So it was Tomb of Annihilation and we were in Omu. 
In came this bard, who got upset whenever we killed any of the slaving people sacrificing on tea, even when they refused our request to surrender. They also were convinced that persuasion was mind control, because of the size of their bonus, and tried to persuasion mind control the party. My paladin ended up being the only one who did actual persuading, because I could actually structure an argument, while their argument boiled down to, I push X at them, look how big my number is. Persuasion is one of those things in the game that, yes, you might be able to roll high with your persuasion roll, and yeah, you might have a good modifier, but you're not going to be able to persuade your way into getting everything you want. You can't persuade the king to go ahead and get off the throne and give you the crown, just because you want him to. I was in a one shot for a friend's birthday, and we had a player with an incredibly complex backstory involving them being the soul of an awakened bear who was trapped in the body of a human and was incredibly opposed to hurting monsters and animals of any kind. They would stop the trajectory of a combat encounter to attack other party members if they thought the party member was getting too violent with a monster that hadn't done enough damage to the party to prove that they weren't just going to run away drove me literally insane. I won't wear armor. If I'm in combat, my character has already failed. No, no studded leather. No, no hidden armor either. No, not that special brigandine that can be hidden and shown off even in high social events and on the street. If I'm in combat, I've already failed. So frustrating. Not everything has to be combat. In this hundred plus page book, only five pages are about combat. I refuse to take the life of a sapient being. Meanwhile, me being chewed on by an Umbra Hawk. Fucking stab it! I think I'll hide over here and set a trap that might inconvenience a CR1 creature. So frustrating. My party's got a super lawful good character who always wants to take humanoid enemies captive to turn them over to the authorities. They even tried to do so with a den of vampires, though my cleric and paladin put a halt to that. The cherry on top is that our DM gives experience for kills and nothing else. That is something I totally do not agree with. If your players are going around adventuring, meeting different NPCs, accomplishing quests, and interacting with the world, they should be given XP. XP does not have to be derived just from combat. My bard and the pacifist, homebrew support class, like a cleric but more mage-like, were surrounded by giant spiders. Both out of spell slots, I'm trying to fight my way out, while my backup is standing there uselessly, just taking the dodge action over and over until we died. Not quite a pacifist, but this player that was in a group I was part of was endlessly trying to bring about a workers' revolt. Yes, much like Marx, and would attempt every situation to sway the faction leaders to his side, even if this was first meeting with them. The player would throw a fit when things even slightly didn't go their way. Monk's character was essentially played as a wise old Asian stereotype. First combat session, he moved to the corner of a small graveyard and made a small fire to meditate at. That was the whole combat. Next combat session, he searched for the perfect stone. Not sure if the DM caught on, or if it was blind luck, but the next fight was a fight beside a lake. While we fought some skeletons and zombies, he decided to move up to the lake and wash his feet. Two turns later, he was being dragged below the lake by two Sahagin, and promptly died. We were hunting a werewolf, and I wanted to study one for backstory reasons. I'm playing a legalistic oracle who took the Hippocratic Oath, so I couldn't harm it myself. When we had it restrained, I asked the druid to help me vivisect it. I thought he'd refuse on moral grounds, and it would lead to some character development. Instead, he called my bluff, accepted my silver scalpel, and started cutting. Fortunately, the monk stepped in pretty quick and put the werewolf out of its misery, but the session ended on a pretty sour note. That is actually an interesting way on how to implement some character motivation and backstory, and some player interaction. Well, I guess it was when I tried to play a really cowardly mage. My group somehow liked that character roleplay-wise, but I wasn't enjoying it, and he was purely dead weight in any combat situation. By the end of the second session playing as this mage, I asked the GM if I could retire this character and make a new one. 
He then told me he was actually considering to ask me to do so, as he noticed the very same problems as I mentioned. It was cringe indeed, but it taught me a lot about how to not interpret a coward character. Since then, I have made another cowardly character, but with a lot more personality, which makes it fun to roleplay. First time playing any tabletop RPG. It was 4th edition D&D, and my DM was a damn saint for putting up with me. I was obsessed with Doctor Who at the time, so I made a cleric named The Cleric. Total pacifist, never even tried to do damage. That, coupled with a hazy at best understanding of how healing actually worked, meant I was entirely useless in playing a character whose only trait was being a poor reference to a sci-fi TV show. Our healer stayed behind with his NPC girlfriend to make tacos, while the rest of us went into a cave to deal with the drow invasion. Our pacifist was a summoner. They claim they never attack things, their summons did. Not sure if cringe, but I had a pacifist mad scientist in Deadlands, spellcaster in a western tabletop RPG. He would only use non-lethal spells and had many area of effect varieties. So instead of casting fireball into a group his party was fighting, he would launch a ball of glue that stopped everyone from moving, then tie up the baddies and unglue his party members. So, what about you? Have you ever had some cringe experience with pacifist characters in your games? If so, I want to hear about it down in the comments below. Personally, I haven't had any experiences where the players were being pacifist, but I have had times where players didn't know what to do, and so they would hold their actions instead. Nothing wrong with that, as long as it doesn't become habit and they're constantly holding their actions. That's going to do it for today. And until next time, hope you feel inspired.